everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun spinner card or a 3D spinner card. I actually saw this picture on Pinterest and it was from uh, Sizzix and they have a, it's actually a die that they have to make this card but I thought that's, you know, relatively straightforward. Let's make it without. So I'm going to show you that today. It's got four sides. You can write on the back there. So I've got lots of room and then the whole thing folds flat and it will sit in a, for me, it's a five by seven envelope. But once you see how easy this is to make, you can make it any size you want. So let me show you how I made it. Okay, so I actually made that one during a Facebook Live and um, it was it was a fun live actually. We all had a bit of a giggle in that one. But um, I learned a few things along the way and um, I've made these spinner cards before, not that exact kind of style, but I've made the whole spinny kind of piece. And the ones that I'd done before were much better and that was using this. And I don't know why I didn't think to use this during the live, but I'll link up here my spinner card playlist and you'll see a Christmas one on there, which has a great spin and that uses this elastic here. And it's using snowflakes and they're die cut and they're symmetrical as well. So they're perfect for when you want something to spin around. And I've also got another one which is using, I think they were from the paper boutique and they're the beautiful woodland animals and they are pre-stamped and die cut images or yeah, just pre-printed images. So across these three cards, you've got a stamped image, which I'm showing today. You've got a symmetrical die cut and you've also got something that's already made for you in a circular shape. So if you look in that playlist to get more inspiration, if you want to just, you know, find other ways to make them, then check that out. But don't use this. <laughs> okay, because all it will do is it doesn't wrap because it's already twisted. You're basically untwisting the bottom, twisting the top, and it, it just is not the it's not really what you want to use. So I've used today this for the lover stamps and it's the hogs and kisses. It's such a fun stamp set. The images are just so cute um, and I've already gone and done all of those. I'm using the Sizzix circle dies here today so we'll go through them in a minute and then you wouldn't have seen this during the live but I just love this sentiment. Oh my god you are another year older. Happy birthday or OMG and it's this one here and this is from the Woodware Clear Magic and it's called It's the Little Things and then the papers I've used today because these are now back in stock and it's my party paper pad. So I'll link all of this um, as always below because I know um, there's a few of you that wanted to get your hands on this one because you missed out when they sold out. Um, and I've used this one, the stripe and the polka dot. So I am using all of those same kind of colours today and I've actually done a lot of it because it's very easy for me to just talk you through and show you. So you'll need four pieces of coloured cardstock. So I'm using this orange today for me that are five by seven. But if you want to do, you know, a six by six, then you'll have four pieces of six by six. Whatever card size you want, you want four pieces of that. Okay, so you're gonna score this side at two and a half and then flip it over and then stick your pattern paper down. So the pattern paper here is two and a quarter by six and three quarters. You'll want six pieces of pattern altogether. I have different patterns. You might want yours all the same. And then you'll want two in that same size in white. So I've stuck them all down, okay? Now, don't burnish and fold, you know, fold and burnish it yet because we're gonna die cut these next. So I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm using these circle dies here. I really like these ones I explained during the live because I like that the cut line is that inner circle. It literally is right up to the edge. So it's really easy to measure, it's easy to line up. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Now this one here measures, or oh, maybe it was the next size up I used. Yeah, I think it was actually. Let me just check, yeah, it was that one. Just pop that one back in there. So this one here was three, I think three and three eighths of an inch diameter, something around that. You can have any size you want really. So if you wanna do a square, you can do that or a rectangle. So this is the one that I'm gonna have at the front. So I'm gonna lay my die over the top here. Now you do wanna make sure that you don't go too large with your aperture because you're gonna weaken the sides. You do stick them onto another piece and I've used the Klaus, this is solid, really, really strong. But just take that into account. If you don't have cloud glue, maybe the cardstock you're using might be, um, you know, quite weak, I guess. So just, um, I wouldn't go too close to the edge. Just give yourself a nice amount. So I've got about, I think we said it was just under, it was about three quarters of an inch. Um, yeah, it's just under three quarters of an inch, kind of, yeah, it's more five eighths, but something like that anyway. And I think that's what I ended up having as my, because I remember now, five eighths of an inch each side. And I came down about an inch. But that's if you're using this size die and that's if you want it in this kind of, you know, style. You could have yours here. You might want yours at the bottom. You know, it's entirely up to you how you do this. But I'm going to come down about an inch so there and then it was about that five eighths of an inch on each side. So there and there. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to pop my tape in here and make sure I stick it on the inside because then if it does rip anything, at least it's going to rip that circle that you don't need to keep. 
Now I'm going to run this through my die machine and I'm going to do that on all of these pieces as well. So once I've done this one, I'm going to pop it over this one and just draw around the circle with pencil and then line up the die again and then run it through the die machine. And that way you're going to make sure that they all, you know, are in the same place so that when we go to put them together, all your circles are going to join, you know, um, and sit nicely together. So. I'm just going to speed this part up and run this through. Also, just put a bit of copy paper on the top there because you will, you know, any markings and impressions on your plate, they will transfer onto the copy paper and not onto your nice pattern paper that you have here. So I'm just going to get them all done. Okay, so those pieces have all been die cut and I've just folded them all in half like so because we're going to stick them all together and this is where you want your circles to join like so when you sit two opposites together, okay? Before we do that, we want to make our little kind of dangle or spinny piece. <laughs> Either way looks nice. So I've already gone and coloured all of these images and then here I have stamped this one as normal, coloured it in. Then I stamped this one using the reverse stamping technique. So I'll link the video for the YouTube live, for the Facebook live below, but also I'll link up here the double wiper card where I actually show you how to do the reverse image stamping. So now I can stick those back to back and when they spin, it's the same image. Okay, because this isn't a symmetrical image, I couldn't just stamp it twice and then just stick them together. That's why if you want something a bit easier, then check out the playlist that I've linked up here as well, which will have the snowflake, because it's a symmetrical snowflake, so I just die cut two of them, put string in the middle, and it was good to go. This way does take a little bit longer, but the effect is really nice. So now I'm going to use my stretchy cord. Now I've got two here. I've got 0.5 mil and I've got the 0.8. So I'm going to use the thicker one. And I think it was this one that I used during that Christmas one. So I'm just going to cut enough that's, you know, longer than the length of the card. So in my case, seven inches. So, and I'm going to stretch it a little bit, not too much, but I will pull it a little bit. Now I've got my hot glue gun on and um, I've had it on just a few minutes because I don't want it piping hot because I don't want to run the risk of it actually melting this. But what I'm going to do, first of all, is I actually light these together using some foam because there was a little bit of dimension from the glue and in that case, that's, that string is actually quite thick. So it just, I feel it looks quite nice if you have it with some foam pads in between the two. So you'll see here, there's just some foam in between there, all right? But you want to decide how you want your, you know, your spinner element, your dangle, whatever you want it to be, how you want it to sit. And I liked mine where it came through kind of the ear and then came out the bottom of the stomach there. So you can see, you know, he's flying slightly angled rather than straight like this. So I'm going to go for that again. And I'm just going to pop my hot glue again, just down there, nice green sparkly glue here. And then I'm just going to turn that over and just sit that one there. So it's not so hot that it's going to melt it, but it will just all kind of dry and set and melt together anyway if it did. So don't, don't pull it at this point, just let it kind of, you know, cool down and then that will be, you know, good to go. And now I'm going to just lay down some foam pads around it. So it just kind of all levels off then. And that way you won't get any kind of like, you know, line through your image or anything. You're not going to see, you know, that there was string through it. And using the clear as well will give it the look that it's, you know, whatever you have spinning is also kind of flying or floating because you won't really see the string. So I'm just going to take all the backing off of that. And now I can just stick this one right over the back here. So I'm just going to line it all up like so. So you can see exactly how I done that just on the Facebook Live um, in the description box where I'll link it. Now I want to stick this on my, you know, my front one first. So I'm going to, you don't have to do it this way, but this is just how I done it. So I'm going to flip this one over and then I want to make sure that the the perfect image, the more crisper one, because your reverse images will tend to be just not as crisp just because of the way that you do it, but they still look great. But I'm going to have it that way because that's when once it stops spinning, that's how I want it to naturally kind of then sit. So I'm not going to stretch anything yet. I'm just going to run a little bit of glue just there. 
and I'm just going to sit this one just in there. So again, I'm not too worried if it, it does kind of feel like it's melting a little bit. Now I am actually going to come up, because I remember now what i done with the one i done at Christmas. I'm going to come up a little bit higher, because I am then going to pull it down just a smidge. So I'm actually going to come up a bit higher there and just let that set there. Like I said, my, heat gun, my glue gun isn't piping hot. It's just warm enough for that glue to melt through. So now I'm going to just trim that off there. So there's not a lot of bulk there either, like so. And then what I can do is I can just pull it down a little bit so it's more in the middle of that circle and it's just lifting up a little bit here where it's pulling, can you see? So I've just got enough tension on it, but that will really help with the spin. So I'm gonna put everything in place and I'm just gonna push down there with my finger and then I'm just gonna pop another little bit of glue just there and then just let that again just set. So just kind of hold that in place for a minute. And again, if you don't want to use the elastic, or you don't have the elastic, you can use string. You just might, don't don't use a twisted string. Don't use a twine, a baker's twine, something like that. Um, you know, you don't want something that's already twisted because you're just going to untwist it. So again, I'm just going to squash that down. So that's nice and set. And now that's staying exactly where I want it to. So I'm just going to trim off this end here. There we go. Okay, and now we want to start sticking them all together. So I'm now just going to carefully fold that one back over again because I have got some hot glue there. Just kind of get that crease back in place. And now just decide what one you want to go next to it. So I'm going to stick this one here. So I'm just going to add my glue. And then if you hold, stand it up, that way you can make sure the base of the card is completely straight. If you've got anything overhanging on the top, you can trim that. But what you don't want is your card to rock and be a bit wonky. So it's best to do it this way because then you can make sure they all line up nicely. And again, just going to spend a minute just making sure that really grabs and it's all lined up. And I'm just pushing my finger down in here to make sure the circles all line up as well. If you're slightly out, we're going to be using these frames in a moment and that will cover up anything like that. So don't worry too much. And then I'm going to do this one on the other side here. And I'm going to stick down the back last and I'll show you how we do that so that you can make sure again everything all lines up and it will fit in your envelope as well. So again, now this one's going on this side here. And you can flip it over this way as well and that way you know you can make sure it all joins up nicely in the centre here. And you can see there already you've got that nice 5 by 7 size here. I've got a little bit of the white there but again you're not going to notice any of that. Okay, and now with this one, you just want to pop your glue over the whole piece. Now you can just keep the card nice and flat and just lay that piece down over the top. Again, make sure it's flush with the bottom because you know all the others will sit nicely. This one just kind of ensures it all folds flat and everything lines up. Just flip it over that way. Okay, so while that's still kind of just drying, I've got these frames. Now on this one here, the one that I showed you, I actually cut them in half. You see there's a slight little cut here and here, and that was just because I thought there was going to be a bit of bulk, and I thought it might have made the ring kind of buckle it a little bit. But I think I'm going to stick these ones down whole, and at least then I can see between the two. But what I've made sure is that I've kept the same colour cardstock, so you, you wouldn't notice that I've cut them. You know, whoever get, gets this, is, that's not going to be the, the thing that they look at. So I'm not worried about, you know, the way it looks at all. But these ones, I'm actually just going to stick them down whole, and just really make sure that you really, that the glue is right across the kind of fold here. Okay, and then again, just carefully fold the frames. I mean, if you've done all this in pattern paper to start with, then you won't probably be doing a lot of these bits, but now that's how it will be. You will then wind it up, so depending on which way you want it to spin, so I'm gonna wind it up. And I can see it's starting to get taut, and I can see all that twisted elastic. It will then be in the envelope, and then when they take it out, you get that really nice spin. 
and that's what we wanted with that one <laughs> but that one is more of a dangle but they still look really good they're such fun cards it sits perfectly in the center of the circle there as well which is what i wanted so that when it does stop spinning and it just then you know stands there to be displayed it hangs really nicely just like that one there I think they look really, really good. They're so much fun. They're relatively easy to make as well. You know, if you do just want to do the pattern paper in a die, then it's going to be much, much quicker because you won't be kind of having to worry about lining things up and you won't have to do like maybe the frames and things like that. But either way you decide to do it, they will look fantastic. So yeah, that's everything for me today. I'll link here now as you'll see two other spinner cards. So they're the ones that I've been speaking about in the tutorial. So if you click on any of them, the snowflake one or the one with the, I think it's the fox. It's a really cute fox either of those they're, they're really fun and nice ones to follow and if you haven't already just click on my face there and subscribe it would be much appreciated and then you'll get to see all the other fun tutorials that i share so thanks for watching and i'll be back again soon bye